Why haven't you watched Recreators yet? For those of you who don't know, Recreators is, it can best be described as a reverse isekai show, as in instead of some normal human being going to a fantasy world, the fantasy world comes to the real world. The show takes place basically in, a, in the real world, where this military uniform princess, henceforth referred to as the antagonist because fuck saying that every time I want to talk about her, has been traveling to different fictional worlds and basically bringing the main characters or villains into the real world and basically seems to have plans to destroy it through, you know, destabilizing reality by bringing in things that just shouldn't exist in this world. And let me tell you, this show is fucking fun. It's fantastic. I was enjoying the whole of the 22 episodes, except for the mid-season recap episode. Why does that exist? But this show is just it's fucking great. It's a good fucking show, and I don't know why nobody except Jeff the Anime Pope or that one time it was mentioned in one of Gigax videos has mentioned this show. Alright, so this is an Amazon Prime video exclusive, which answers my previous question, but still, this show is just a load of fun, especially if you just like to see, like, character interactions and fighting and just... Oh god, why why did I just barely discover this show? This thing is great. Alright, let's talk about it a bit more in depth. in depth. So the show starts off with this our protagonist who we might as well just call reg you know, just the fucking self-insert character coon. And he gets transported briefly to the fantasy world of this anime he's watching, where he watches the main heroine in her giant robot fighting off what appears to be this oddly colored woman wearing a military uniform using, you know, these swords, you know, this ring of swords, and seems to be able to cast magical spells by playing the violin with a sword on a Tommy gun. And it's just like, okay, let's, let's fucking go. This is gonna be a fucking trip, isn't it? And after that, they, she ends up teleporting the heroine and our main character back to his world, where she explains that this is the land of the gods, and it is horrible, and she kind of wants to destroy it, why don't you help me? Also, you can probably find your creator and change things in your world, but then again, destroying the world of the gods might have unintended consequences on your world, but you know what, join me and let's destroy this place anyways. Of course, the heroine being the hero of a story decides that no, she's not going to try and destroy this world, that's stupid, I'm going to join up with this guy. And the story continues on there, they eventually meet up with the her creator and convince him that yes, this is really happening, the character from her world has been transported to the real world, and slowly but surely, even more characters from different worlds, you know, start appearing. Some of which ally themselves with this fantasy, you know, story heroine, and the main character, a 16-year-old who wants to one day create his own anime and manga, and some of them ally themselves with the military uniform princess, the antagonist, because, you know, their worlds are shit and they want their creators to eventually change them, or they just got nothing to live for. And it's just, this show, this show is just fun with all capitals. Um, like I said earlier, all of these characters are from different, you know, universes in this one world. They're from different anime, manga, and video games, and just watching them bounce off of one another is great. And the fact of the matter is, not all of them are the heroes of the story. Some of them are, like, side characters. Some of them are outright the villains of the story. And just seeing them interact with one another and seeing their abilities interact is just fun. Like... There's this one fight scene early on in the show, which is the main heroine of the fantasy story, who had a mech but no longer has it, ends up getting into a fight with this, like, magical girl from a traditional cutesy magical sh girl show. And, like, she's animated in such a way where all of her attacks look like they're out of a magical girl anime, but when she actually hits the character from this fantasy story, she actually, you know, gets injured like 
she does one of those overpowered city destroying laser attacks or city block destroying and it causes her it fucks her up something fierce and she freaks out because it's like oh th this isn't supposed to happen in my world when i hit someone with a laser love laser or whatever the hell she calls her attacks it just knocks them out it doesn't cause them obvious and severe internal bleeding and doesn't leave them wanting to looking like they want to die and it's just those interactions like She's used to knocking out a character, and that's the end of the story. Suddenly, they're friends now. But all of these characters are the kind of people who, like, you knock them down, they get back up, and they are willing to fight to the death no matter what. And it's just... Watching these characters bounce off of one another is spectacular. And it's just... Oh, it's just... All of these fight scenes are great, because all of the characters have their own distinct styles from their shows, like... The one of the main characters, one of the quote unquote heroes of this particular story, is in fact the antagonist of his own story. And basically, his abilities are basically he's ridiculously strong, can jump around and just like swings around a boken that's a wooden training sword so hard that it creates shockwaves that he can use to attack people. And he also has a stand, and it's like, okay. Yeah, and then he at one point gets into a fight with another character who is from a light novel, this sort of... She's like... She's this whole Yandere, obviously crazy girl who has her own stand ability, which is on the level, if not a little bit below, something like the world or something. Like, her power is just so fucking broken, and just seeing those two fight is just... Oh, it's... The fight scenes in this show are fun. They aren't they aren't the best animated, but they are animated in such a way that you get the feeling of all the impacts. Everything feels like it's hitting each other. Plus there's a the fact that, you know, as I said before, every single character has their own distinct way of fighting and how these fighting styles clash and how they fight is great. And even when they are not fighting, their interactions are fantastic. These all come from different worlds with different, you know, types of interaction. Like, as I said before, with the magical girl, she's used to knocking out her, her opponents and suddenly they're friends now. But some of these characters, like, there's one guy who's just straight up going to shoot one person who's knocked out because in that way they won't hurt him in the future. And then there's this one knight who, contrasting to the heroine, seems to come from a world that's more akin to, say, something like Berserk than, say, the world of... I can't think of any fantasy anime off the top of my head. But, like, yeah, it's like just seeing these, like... They seem really similar in concept. They're both these knights, and they're both women, and they both fight, you know close quarters with a sword because well one of them only is fighting close quarters with a sword i imagine because her magic armor mech thing got fucking wrecked by the antagonist but yeah they both fight up close but it's like they have very different morals because like i said one of them comes from a traditional fantasy series and the other one comes from what seems like berserk so there's a lot of clashing like that now, you're also probably wondering, what about the story? Well, the story, it's not bad. In fact, I quite like the story. The problem is that you can see what's coming from a mile away. I mean, seriously, the show starts off on this very obvious suicide. And then it's like, oh, suddenly there's this, you know, military uniform wearing princess who is attacking another heroine and brings them to the real world and wants to destroy the world also she recognized the protagonist and a couple of months ago he stopped drawing and shit because something terrible happened Ooh, i wonder who this you know i wonder what's gonna happen next and you know when the climax of the show happens and they describe how they plan to defeat the antagonist it's like oh Oh, I know how they're going to end this. This is going to end in a super obvious way. But, you know, while the, uh, you know, story behind the show itself isn't very... It's nothing you can't see coming. Just watching the characters bounce off one another is, again, something of, like, it's just so enjoyable. Like, one of my favorite characters of all time is an antagonist from a light novel who's just fucking sh 
just this sociopathic, insane woman, like, watching her talk and watching her speak, she's so animated in such a ridiculous way that she just looks like she's fucking crazy and it's great it's awesome i love her i would waifu her it might get my dick torn off but i don't care i waifu the harja i'm not a smart person when it comes to these things but yeah recreators is fucking fun if you have the time to do so go watch it it's on amazon prime so if you have you know amazon prime you get it for free and you know, now you just have to pay one single paywall to get that, and if you have the, you know, 14-day trial for Amazon Prime Video, then go ahead and do that. Uh, anyways, this has just been a good show that I wanted to gush about a bit, just ramble on about it. My name has been Juan John John. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, there's a button for that too. Comment, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll see y'all later. Also, check out the links down below to my Patreon and my various social media places where you can just, like, follow me, or you can support me via Patreon and, yeah, all that stuff. Alright, this has been Juan John John. Goodbye.